Okay, so now that you know the Photoshop interface and about the layers and image formats, let's get started with the cover magazine. So let's create a new document, go to File and New, and here we are going to call it Cover Magazine. The size will be International Paper A4. We're going to be working with big image sizes in this project, which means that the quality will be very good and you will be able to print the cover magazine on an A4 style, and the quality will be perfect on paper as well. The resolution should be at least 300. For the color, choose CMYK, cayenne, magenta, yellow, and black, which are the colors used for printing. This is the setup for using the pictures that I provided in the video description for you to make the same cover magazine as myself. Now, if you prefer to use your own pictures, keep in mind that the size and resolution has to be large as well, or it won't work. If you don't have any pictures with this resolution or size, you can still do it. But instead, you will have to choose Custom, and choose the size pertaining to your own picture size and resolution. If you want to use pictures from the internet, for example, from Facebook, to do a cover magazine with a picture of your friends, or for example your own picture, and you don't intend to print it out and just want to keep it on the screen or send it by email, or upload it to Facebook, then I recommend to set it at 400 by 600 and make sure it is in pixels with a resolution of 72 and RGB color, as this would be sufficient for pictures from the internet. Okay, but for now, I'll just leave it in international paper, CMYK and OK. Now, let's import our pictures to the Photoshop document. The easiest way is to drag the picture to the canvas like so. And there it is. Then hit enter for the picture to be placed. Now let's create a new layer for the second picture. From here, make sure the layer is selected. And now drag the other picture to the canvas, then hit enter. Now because this is going to be the background, we'll drag it under the other layer. And now we have the model on the front. We're going to call this layer model and this one background. And now right click on one of them and choose rasterize layer and do the same for the other layer as this will make them editable. Let's lock the background and make it invisible so that we don't mess it up. And then let's start working on our model. The first thing I want to do is subtract the model's original background and make it transparent for the other background under to be visible. There are different ways to do this, but for this tutorial we'll do it using the quick selection tool. So make sure the model layer is selected. And now go ahead and grab the quick selection tool, and on the properties bar, let the size be about 70, and see what I do to select the background. I'll apply the tool in this part between the arm and the body, because it will be easier for you to see how this works. Actually, let's zoom in a bit first, so that we can work better. Now we are ready to start using the tool. Remember, if you hold the space bar on your desktop, you can move the picture around without leaving the tool you were using. As soon as you let go of the spacebar, the hand tool will disappear, and the tool you were using before will be automatically back. Now, if I click and drag a little bit in here, you can see that the background has been selected. Now if I hit delete from the keyboard, this selected part will disappear. This was just a demonstration. Now, because the tool is in the add mode, anywhere I click and drag will create a new selection added to my previous selection, so now if I hit delete, both parts will be deleted. I hit Ctrl Z again to undo. But if you look here, the selection tool sometimes is not very precise, and selects more than what we need. I don't want this part of her body to be deleted, right? To fix this, we can change the property of the tool to Subtract mode. Change the size anytime if you need it, like so. And we can fix these little mistakes, subtracting from the selection. Okay, now you should practice for yourself, and try to get all the background around the model selected the best as possible, as I'm doing. Change from Add to Subtract mode when you need it, and set the size of the tool any time you need to. Remember that you can hit Ctrl Z to undo the last step any time if you make a mistake, or hit Ctrl Shift Z to undo more than one step. Or to redo it, go to Edit and Step Forwards. The hair is always the hardest part when selecting in Photoshop. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to be the most precise as you can. Like this, more or less. Once you've got the background selected, go ahead and delete. Actually, let me fix this little thing here. Now it's good. Okay, so now I delete it, and next I'll go to the Rectangle Selection tool, 
and here I set the feather to 5 pixels and hit delete again. This will make the edges softer and it will look a bit more realistic when we put her over the fake background. These parts haven't been removed because they were out of the canvas. If you have them in your document as well, you can remove them easily using the rectangle selection tool. Cool. Now click anywhere to unselect it, and now make the other background visible, and unlock it. Go to the Move tool and check this option if it wasn't checked before. This will let you modify the size of the picture and also rotate it if you want. In this case, let's make it a bit bigger and wider as well, something like this. She is going to be standing on this rock down here, so that's why I want to make the rock wider, to make it look more realistic. It still looks a bit fake, I know, but we'll make some changes on the color and shadows. So go ahead and grab the burn tool, set the size 100 and the hardness 100%. The range will be shadows, the exposure 50%, and protect tones must be checked. Make sure the background layer is selected, and zoom into her feet. Go back to the burn tool and apply it like so, around her feet to make a shadow effect. That's much better. Cool. Now let's apply some color effects. Make sure the layer on the top is selected, because the mask effect that we will apply will be a new layer on top of the layer we have selected, and this layer effect will apply to all the layers below. Okay, now go to the Adjustments tab. If you can't see it, just click where it says Adjustments, and the panel will expand. And from here, choose Hue Saturation. Actually, here you can play and try to apply the different masks and see which ones you like. You can undo the changes and keep trying or delete the effects from the Layers panel. Just have in consideration that depending on the color effect you apply to the picture, then you'll have to choose a color for the text that matches with the picture. For example, if you choose a pallid color like the old style, then you'll have to make the text with bright colors. Anyway, for this project, we'll use bright colors with strong saturation, and then we'll use the same colors with different tones for the text. So go ahead and select Hue Saturation, and under Preset, Increase Saturation More. I'm going to even increase the saturation a bit more to 55 and hit enter. Okay, so once you have it, you can close the panel. Then you can save your work because you're ready for the next chapter. So hit Control shift s and save it on your desktop or anywhere you want. And I'll see you in the next chapter.